Hey, now it's The Rob from 1061 KISS FM here with my freshly shaven 16-bit colleague. Hey guys, I assure you it's Steve from 1061evansville.com. That's right, our website contributor. And uh, of course my 16-bit partner, my player two in the world of video podcasting. I think we have a fun topic here. If I had to pick my favorite video game console of all time, I would pick the Super Nintendo. Yeah. And it's probably because that was the system that I played the most during my adolescence. Okay. Uh, I got my Super Nintendo when I was in third grade, so June, uh, boy, what June probably 92? I don't remember. Third, I was in third grade. I'll figure that out here in a second. <laughs> I got it for my birthday, and I'll never forget what that was like. My very own console. The Nintendos and Ataris are my older brothers. The Super Nintendo was mine, and my library of games was pretty expansive. Steve, how about yours? Um, yeah, that's about when I started to ex really expand in the video game realm. Um, I, again, I felt like that one was mine. And, the, uh, the Super Nintendo was, in my opinion, the unequivocal winner of the 16-bit wars yeah. between Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. They did everything right, in my opinion, although there were a few things that we can talk about next week when we focus on Sega Genesis. Super Nintendo did what the Nintendo did, but better. They supersized everything. They made a whole bunch of new intellectual properties, and they continued to prosper on the ones from last generation. Uh, so let's talk about, Steve, some games. I've written down, I, I didn't rank mine, but I've yeah. written down about a dozen games we can talk about. I know you have some you want to talk about. You want to get things started? I can. Um, get things started with the game that came with the console, Super Mario World. The unequivocal gold medal choice for what separated Super Nintendo from Sega Genesis. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, just... I, I love the Super Mario Brothers, and then when it went on NES or Super NES, just it was it, it seemed like the end of an era as far as Mario. It kind of evolved after yeah, that. Yeah, when the NES like kind of came to an end, the last Mario game was Super Mario Three, and then this game took what everyone loved about Mario, who was a beast in the early '90s, yes. and made it better. It made it clearer. It made it easier to play, it made it more colorful, and it added a companion, uh, which to me was everything that you should do when evolving your systems. Yes. Nintendo is the king of getting every drop of juice out of their franchises. Mario is still a huge name because they've always taken care of him, yes. as is The Legend of Zelda and Link from those series. For the same reasons, The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past... Uh, stepped up everything that people loved about Zelda and made it better. It made it brighter. It made it more colorful. It made it more accessible to new fans. That game is my favorite game of all time, and it shone on the Super Nintendo. Yes. It was it was the home for it. You have more you want to talk about? Um, if you want to go ahead and talk about some. Uh, well, I feel like um, this might be a weird choice, but the game F-Zero was a very okay. important game to the SNES catalog. First of all, the only place you could play any of these games we're going to talk about was the Super Nintendo. And also, this was a launch title that really showed what the what the Super Nintendo was capable of. What I mean by that is it had the 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 graphical enhancements. It had all of the processing displayed. The music was better. The graphics were better. This was a great showcase. If you if you just bought a Super Nintendo, the game you should have bought with it was was at zero. Yeah. That's the one you want to show it off with mm -hmm. to your friends. Yeah. So, what about you? Any more? Um, I've got a few more here. Um, I feel like Nintendo knew they had something with Mario. They knew they had something with Zelda. Somewhere in their minds, they tried to create the two together, uh -huh. and they came up with Bomberman. Okay. It, it was very much Zelda-like in gameplay, but they tried to add Mario components. Um, it may not be like one of the most popular games, but mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. And uh, that's what I got the feel for, is that they really tried to cross Link and Mario that is a very fun and explosive, for lack of a better yes. term, multiplayer <laughs> game. Um, let's talk about uh, the Final Fantasy games. Okay. Uh, for Until the PlayStation rolled around, those were the only places to play the Final Fantasy yep. games. Uh, this was a, a very important move for Nintendo, I feel like, for a few reasons. Number one, uh, those are the unequipped... That and Chrono Trigger are mm -hmm. the undoubted best RPGs of that era. There's no way around it. And Sega had absolutely nothing to compare it to. So they created their own Fantasy Star games, 
which sucked. They sucked by a mile, and you could tell they were trying to be Final Fantasy and failing. And to me, that epitomized what Sega was trying to do. They were always kind of trying to... Uh, they were one step behind Nintendo, mm -hmm. and so they saw that these Final Fantasy games were working, and like, okay, let's give it a shot ourselves. We'll build some in-house here. Let's. We have Sega, we have uh, Super Mario, we'll make Sonic. You've got uh, Final Fantasy, we'll make Fantasy Star. There are a lot of uh, evidence you can point to as to ways that Nintendo was always staying one step ahead of Sega Genesis. Genesis always trailing just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Fantasy Star and the Final Fantasy games on Super Nintendo are the key example of that, in my opinion. Yeah. Do you have more? Um, I'm going to go into the sports room a little bit. I am not a hockey fan at all. I know the basics. I know it's 5-on-5. Five five. They're on the ice. They're trying to get a puck into a net. That's about what I know. This game here made me love hockey for a short time. What is that? Super slap shot. Um, it was never licensed. <laughs> it, was never, it. it was never licensed by any professional league. So you're playing as the United States or Sweden or Russia as countries playing each other. Okay. What set this game apart, or what made me like it, is if you bump into characters three times, you get a close-up of you fighting another guy. <laughs> so it's basically hockey with, like, a mini-game. That's cool. And I just, I just loved it. And I probably played this solid for a year um, when it came out. And, I mean, I've not played a hockey game before or since. But when I found out that you could fight the other players and it gave you a close-up view... That was my go-to hockey game. I loved it. I don't have a whole lot of sports games on my list. I didn't play a whole lot of them. That does sound very fun. Um, Nintendo, I feel like, especially when compared to Sega Genesis, was the king of platforming games. You mentioned Super Mario World. I'm going to talk about Donkey Kong Country. Okay. Genesis had nothing to compare to Donkey Kong Country, and that game was... Uh, among the best, among the best games of all times. They're still making Donkey Kong Country games for the Wii U, um, but you played the original Donkey Kong Country, haven't oh, yes, you? Yes. Uh, it's a grand slam. It makes no mistakes. It is awesome, and you can't compare it to anything on the Sega Genesis. It's one of the games that put the nail in the coffin. Yes. Um, one one game I really I love to hate, I guess you would say, sure. was a superhero game, and it was Todd McFarlane's Spawn. I never played that game, but I remember it. Um, it was probably the hardest gameplay game, but the graphics were so cool, the music was so cool. It was basically the beat 'em up. You go through levels, you fight bosses. It gave you the energy, the energy bar, like all games. But with Spawn, he had this. He had like magical powers, and whenever you use these, he his life diminished. So there was a separate, uh, separate uh, sure. counter for that. And, I mean, the game was just so difficult, but I just I couldn't get over it. It was the first real graphical game I just enjoyed to watch. All those comic book-inspired games had really... Like, remember Maximum Carnage? Oh, yeah. And um, there were there were other ones that just looked really cool because they were comics before that. Yeah. Uh, another one, this one was for the Genesis, but Comic Zone. Did you ever play that one? Uh, I don't think so. It had a really cool presentation that you might appreciate. Uh, my third favorite Super Nintendo game, and one of my top five games of all time is Super Metroid. Another great example of just yeah. capitalizing on their old catalog. This, Metroid had been around since 1987, and in 1994, it reached its high point. Yeah. Since or before, there had never been a better Metroid game than that one. And I love that style of games where you can explore until you can explore no more, yeah. and then you get new powers, and then you can go back and re-explore and find new things. And uh, I just I love that presentation. A real high watermark in games, in my opinion, is Super Metroid. Yeah, um, another, what I will call, I'll use Rob's word, high watermark, and something else I don't think Genesis had anything to compare to, to this day, is still the best piece of video gaming artillery, is the Super Scope 6. <laughs> did you ever deal with that? You know, I did, and I actually feel I disagree with you on this. I do, oh, I, really? still, I still have my Super Scope. I feel like that was a failed accessory. It did not oh. get the support it needed. I had Battle Clash and I had Super Scope 6. Yeah. And uh, while they were fun and they were cool in their own right, it never had the longevity. It should have been better. Yeah. We yeah. can talk about that more. Maybe we can do an accessory special one day. That'll okay. be fun. Um, but that, uh, you know what, though? It, there's nothing to compare it to on the Sega Genesis. Yeah. So I feel like that is a, that's a great example of something that is exclusively Super Nintendo that separated it. Um, I'm going to throw a few words in here. Steve, tell me if you've ever heard this word before. FX microchip. Do you remember that? I, I, I've heard of it. The FX microchip debuted in a game called Star Fox. 
Okay. And it was a way of... It, a lot of people thought it was a whole lot of mumbo-jumbo to make yeah. their games seem a little bit better than Genesis, and it probably was. But the FX microchip debuted in the Star Fox game, which I think is a great example of a game that separated Super Nintendo yeah. from the Sega Genesis. Uh, Earthbound, Mario Kart, and one last one for you, Steve, Killer Instinct. Yes. Remember Killer Instinct? Oh, yeah. That was only available on Super Nintendo, and man, what a unique 2D fighter. Yes. So, yeah. you got any more you want to mention? Is that about it? That's about it. I think that was a solid list of the games yeah. that really separated the SNES, and what that's what, those are the games that win the war. The games yeah. that can be released on both consoles aren't helping really the system, but those are the games that put the nail in the coffin, if you ask me. Yeah. Next week, though... For, uh, for our Genesis fans, we will celebrate the Genesis and the exclusive games on that console that made, uh, that made it last as long as it did. Uh, for myself, for the Rob, and of course for my friend Steve, we are signing off and we will see you next Wednesday for the 16-Bit Superstars. Thanks, guys.